live from Toronto, Canada, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Futurist Conference 2018. Brought to you by theCUBE. Hello everyone, welcome back to so theCUBE live coverage here in Toronto for the Untraceable Blockchain Futurist Conference, two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We were just singing here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante, Tony Lane, CUBE alumni with Culture, and we have James McDowell, <laughs> head of strategy at Sentinel. He's also a PGA professional golf professional and a boxer extraordinaire. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Thank Good you for having you. us, yes! We're having some fun here before the camera came <laughs> on. Super exciting, even though the market's kind of been in a downward trough and about to you know, do its normal cycle in crypto. Tons of energy, the culture's changing. Yeah. There's a real energy around focusing on high quality builders, high quality individuals. Uh, absolutely. This is a real dynamic. This projects for good, this projects for profit, this great engineering going on. Yeah. What could be better? For sure, and we've been through the trough so many times, we've gotten to the certain point that now I just kind of like, I'm like, well, I mean, we're here again. You know what I mean? And now it's time for, we figure out right now who's really in it to win it and who's just playing the game. Tony, you know what I love about you? You've got great energy, you've got great aura, you've got great culture. <laughs> you've been around, you've seen it early, you've been involved in a lot of the iterations of the industry that's just now growing to be a baby and it's growing up into its elementary school years. Yeah. What do you, what's your take? I mean, you look at this, you know, I know you do a lot of retreats and self-reflection. What's the industry, where does it come from? Where is it now? How do you feel about what's happening? So I've been in blockchain since 2011, and from a price perspective, there's actually a science fiction story that came out on Reddit in 2014 or 13 by someone named Luca underscore Magnata. And it's called, I am from the future and I am here to stop you from what you are doing. And in this science fiction story, he outlines this pricing curve that basically shows for the first five years of Bitcoin's existence, if no other market factors happen, no outside influence, no qualitative influence, the first five years, 10X every year. Second five years, every other year, 10X every other year. And what's crazy is that if we wouldn't have had Mt. Gox and some of these other events, like Bitcoin was only supposed to go to 10K last year, which is 20K, it doubled. So if we wouldn't have had those external events, that pattern would have actually unfolded. So what's really easy and simple to remember about Bitcoin is that it has a scarce supply. Yeah. That's, I think that's the easiest way to put any of this. And so this is just a period of time, the market overextended itself and it shouldn't have gone realistically past 10K, it doubled. So yeah, I mean, that's uh, it, that sh to be expected, right? To be expected. And it's still an unknown, in my opinion. I, mean, I looked at, um, I did an exercise about six months with my friend. We looked at the NASDAQ during the pre-bubble days and looked at uh. the expansion of the NASDAQ. And that's yeah. just a small scale relative to global care crypto. Yeah. It's actually in line with some of the expansion we've seen in other financial markets. So I kind of think it's good to have a little curation going on and you know, culling out some of the dead wood, yeah. bringing in the better projects. This is kind of the reality now. I mean, yeah. you know, RIP good times. Well, you know, Bradley Rodder yesterday at the Cloud and Blockchain yeah. Conference posited that, he wasn't talking about Bitcoin, he was talking about Ether. He said there's just too many damn coins and every ICO is, most ICOs anyway, tied to Ethereum. Yeah. Buy it? Well, I mean, and you can take this one too, but yeah. yeah. I mean, what I see is there has to be a, a decoupling at some point, right? There has to be some sort of decoupling. Um, at the moment, everything is very correlated. And yeah, I, th I think as time goes on, you will see, it's like survival of the fittest, right? So you've got, you've got a lot of blockchains and you've got a lot of tokens on Ethereum that want to come off Ethereum. It's survival of the fittest. I feel like, yeah, the, the, the best ones will prevail and, and the ones that aren't trusted or aren't secure, yeah, so, so you talked about who's in it to win it. Like how, yeah. What do you look for in the contenders versus the pretenders? What are the attributes that you as yeah. kind of deep experts in this field look yeah. toward the winners? Well, ICOs right now are kind of like a candy that you love coming out with a new flavor. It's like everyone's like, oh yeah, like remember this candy, gotta buy it now. But at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same candy. It's just like a little different sweetener. <laughs> And so we will experience, obviously, a, a, a market high. correction. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. But I think what's really beautiful about this is it's actually enabling 
creative potential. Jobs of the future are not gonna be, oh, I know how to do C++, now I have a job forever. It's gonna be about reinvention. That is the real economy of the future, and blockchain's a huge enabler for that. So, and new yeah. markets are opening up too, so it's not oh, just yeah. the reinvention, which I agree. Yeah. The reimagine the reinvention, and new markets. Artej was on earlier saying, on his 80 day tour of 10 countries, yeah. new markets are exploding. Yeah. The access to new markets is rechanging, yeah. so it's not your grandfather's venture capital model, Silicon Valley, yeah. or New York, or London. Yeah. It's there, there are many, many reasons to, you know, tokenize the world. Um, and the thing that the, the thing that stands out to me is, you know, when you look at tokenizing securities, the fact that this opens up the free market to everyone. You know, these things can be traded 24/7, 365 from anywhere in the world. Traditionally, if you want to buy stocks, Wall Street's open for less time than it's um, than it's closed. Yeah. And so it, it just opens up the free market to everyone all over the world. And yeah. to me, that's that's James, revolutionary. you're a professional incredible. golfer. Someone use a golf analogy. I have to because yeah, you know, I love golf. You're a golfer. So excellent golfer. So, Not a pro, but he could be if he played more. What's your handicap? <laughs> I don't keep score. No, he's really good. He, I, I, <laughs> that's that's right. that's I play with right. him many times, and he never plays. He plays like what? Once or twice a year. Four times a year. He consistently shoots good I'm scores. I'm a player. It's a little bit of hockey in me, but uh, awesome. like a Happy Gilmore uh, yeah. going on. Yeah. Awesome. But, okay, let's use a golf metaphor. Yeah. Okay. So the world that we know that's the centralized, governed, world banks, big corporations that are being decentralized, consider them like the wooden shafts and the old clubs. Now, all of yeah. a sudden, graphite shafts, yeah. new club heads, new yeah. technology. Yeah. The game doesn't really change fundamentally, yeah. but it changes the performance. Yeah. Do you buy that? Is that a good analogy? I totally, it's a perfect analogy, you know, and you go to the golf clubs and you've got the older members and they don't buy it. They say that the performance doesn't increase with the new technology, but really, we know that the it's The old stodgy does. members. And, and it's, it comes down to that people are naturally averse to change. People don't really like change. Something that they don't quite understand, they, they naturally dismiss. If they don't want to delve in, they'll dismiss it. Yeah. And everyone here today is is going down this rabbit hole, but there's a hell of a lot of people out there that, you know, I don't really get it, I don't want to get it, but yeah. so and, and they'll dismiss it and they'll even they'll even talk it down if it threatens them. Yeah. So. Let's hope that the game changes though. I mean, come yeah, on, like if to. you look at the current distribution over time, we've moved from tribalized to uh, you know kings and queens to nation states. Let's hope that we actually enable a redistribution of wealth. Yeah. I want to see blockchain create yeah. the Garden of Eden, yeah. not <laughs> say, okay, well this is, because what we're experiencing now is basically same incentives, slightly less bad people. And I feel yeah. that if we really use new technology as an opportunity for change, change is going to happen. Yeah. And if we make the integration of new technology about experiencing compassion in action as a humanity, when we change human perception, human behavior, your understanding of your own limitations, when we enable real freedom, not just the illusion of freedom as money. Yeah. Well, Gabriel yeah, Ahmed was on yesterday, which he's with BIT, yeah. and he's done an amazing work what Definitely. he's doing to transform the Caribbean islands with exchange, yeah. Yeah. changing a society. They're digitally yeah. connected, almost 100% penetration of yeah. mobile. It's incredible. Yet they, yeah. got, they can't access some basic services of society. Yeah. This well, is now a it, new game changer. And you're taking an integrative approach to how you interact with people and it's yeah. part of your persona. Yeah. Maybe I'm pushing the golf analogy too much here, but. No, bring it, bring it. Okay, so <laughs> I'm watching the end of the PGA this week and they're interviewing Tiger Woods, he's <laughs> back, you know, he comes to talking. And they're interviewing him and he wants to be on the Ryder Cup team. Now, if you've observed him in the Ryder Cup, not great. Yeah. This is a team sport, right? The Euros always kill the Americans when the, the superstar <laughs> is on, right? And it's sort of the same thing that you're saying. It's the, you get the haves and the have-nots. It's a team sport and it's community driven. Yeah. Right? yeah. You Tiger, think it applies. Tiger increases viewings like you wouldn't believe. You know, oh, Tiger's playing. Everyone tunes in. Which is um, great for the sport. Yeah, and bad I think for the Americans because they always lose when he plays. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I think it would be, you know, why not put him in the team? 
because it's good for the game, it's good for viewings, it gets people more engaged. Tiger's been humble, too. He knows it. he's been humble. He's the world bank. But you know the Europeans <laughs> are a lock if he plays, right? That's, 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 yeah. You're biased, James. Yeah. Yeah. Tiger's the world bank. You want him involved, but you don't want him dominating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so guys, let's take it back. Let's the reality. You guys are working together on a project. We were talking. You guys, what are you guys working on? Talk about, talk about the projects you guys are involved in. Definitely. So, my core focus right now, what James and I do together, is we take these skills we've learned integrally through my life as you know a performing artist and then his previous life, and also current life, as a professional athlete, and we really take what we've learned through these dynamic industries and use our knowledge and our network to help entrepreneurs who are driven with integrity and a pure heart to be a success. And so it's really what we do together is we just really help people. Um, and that's, that's what we do both for fun and for enjoyment. Uh, and what I'm working on personally, James is the head of strategy at a company called Sentinel. Uh, and I'll let him get into that. What I'm working on personally is global citizenship. And my company culture is actually focused on something really integral to blockchain, which is capitalizing the market share on the tradition, the transition out of nation states and into community-oriented governance models. So we have one layer that's open source, for free, for the world, forever, to own your agreements and to own your identity as a self-sovereign individual stewarded by your community to give everyone more context on each other. And then our for-profit business is basically like Facebook connects people to your, their friends. Culture connects people to communities and connects communities to dApps that are services and economies, basically. And we build that whole ecosystem. So that's really what I'm up to at Culture. And then James and I have our own venture together. And James is also head of strategy at Sentinel. Yeah. What do you want about that? Okay, so Sentinel is an interoperable network layer for distributed resources. So let me break that down. Um, what blockchain technology allows is for you to monetize excess resources, like excess bandwidth, um, excess GPU or CPU power. And so our first working product is a decentralized VPN. So you know what a VPN is? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the Sentinel DVPN is distributed. So what that allows you to do, for example, is you could access, you can monetize your excess bandwidth by hosting a node that people can connect to. And the beauty of the decentralized VPN is that it's probable. So all the code is open source and there's proof that the data is actually being kept private, it's encrypted. Um, and there's no, there's no centralized or, uh, body or company that can be you know, shut down or, or forced to give up data or paid, to, paid for data. It's distributed, so it's fair and it's, it's secure. So, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of big companies in the crypto space that um, are very concerned with data privacy. And they may not trust central VPNs, uh, traditional centralized VPNs. And you get so, paid. So yeah. if you host your own node, you get paid. Yeah, this is, okay. it's, a, it's a marketplace. So anyone in the world can set up their own node, run their own node, help other people obscure their traffic if they don't want, like for example, GDPR, if you don't want every website that you visit to monitor literally everything you do, you might want to consider using a VPN for the sake of preserving your own personal privacy and the integrity of your data, which you own, and rightfully should actually own the monetization value of. Yep. Sure. So any here, here. person in the world, you can have a cube right. node, yeah. and yeah. you guys can pay, people can pay $5, Sign us up. your whole network can use it. So I can sell my XX compute capacity, network yeah. bandwidth. Exactly. The storage too, or not, you're not touching that? Uh, storage, I mean, it's a little more complex. down the line. So it's, it's right. a marketplace for, for, for distributed resources. That's Sentinel. The first working product is the DVPN, and yeah. down the line, yeah, we're going to come up with much more. So others could actually uh, plug into that platform. I can, yeah, so you want to do a live stream in China, I can pop on a VPN. There it is, run Google Apps in China Essentially, yes. through a VPN, because you can't run Google on Yes, we know. As we know, <laughs> we yeah. can't stream in China unless it's YouTube. Um, wow. Cool. All right, guys, well, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate thanks the commentary. Thanks for having us. Great it's to see you. Fun. Yes! It's very inspirational. I think there's a lot of mission-driven, <laughs> cultural change coming very fast. Yeah. This next generation coming up, 
is going to be the stewards of making the change happen. Yeah. It's our job to set the table yeah. and right. get these services out there. Congratulations. Fantastic. Okay, CUBE coverage here live in Toronto <laughs> at the Untraceable <laughs> Blockchain Futurist Conference, two days. It's the CUBE wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier. <laughs> Stay with us. Day one's continuing. The best guests, the most important people, bringing the great blockchain crypto world together here in Toronto. We'll be right back. Thank you.